Whoa, you guys are brutal. That's what the title of this one's gonna be. Holy crap, you guys are more brutal on this episode than I was. What's going on? Hey guys, reading your guys' comments once again, this time for episode 15, and holy shit, you guys did not like this episode. Holy shit, you guys are brutal. But before we talk about something horrible, let's talk about beating something horrible. If you guys haven't checked out my buddy Sinison's page, Check him out, subscribe to him. We're trying to get him to 300 subscribers before he does his Spooky Night BC Cancer Foundation charity stream on October 24th. I'll make sure to put the links in the description below. Let's fight a good cause, because if we're gonna watch this garbage, the least we can do is fight that bastard cancer. Now, just to let you know, there are 67 comments. Wow, you guys are real vocal about this one. You didn't like it. So I'm gonna go through the ones that I think are the best because there's a lot of them and I, I've gotta go to work again tomorrow. Remember when demons were terrified of angels? Remember when details weren't changed on the fly to suit whatever schmuck writer is designing the next episode? Good times. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a long, long, long time ago. Ignoring the fact that I'm supposed to believe that these two insignificant humans are actually a threat to God like Chuck and Amara. I don't understand how this is still... I don't understand how there's still time for filler episodes. They've already brought back characters like Lilith, so they should have done more of that. I mean, Sam and Dean are having to face all of their enemies they defeated on their journey at once. It's pretty epic. I'm saying this because clearly they ran out <laughs> out of ways to keep the stakes up if they settled on God as a final villain. I mean, if even if God dies, can't he just wake up from the Enti? Everyone seems to blank oh it just ended there but yeah you're, you're not wrong you're you're not wrong the stakes are completely absent from this show and it's I, I ripped on the beginning of this show with the really bad three-parter but at least that was something and that was apparently all the muster they could have why is nobody talking about that talking possessed teddy bear in the beginning of the episode i really like your supernatural reviews when mine they were five minutes longer videos were full length instead no i would not torture you guys with me talking to you for that long no <laughs> i wouldn't do it my god the editing alone would be such a pain in the butt i just need them to get to the main story this doesn't feel like a final season it's like they don't want to acknowledge that the show is ending and that's what bothers me and you guys are going to bring that up a lot there's a lot of comments like that man andrew dab loves retcons death explained the war between god and the darkness which he provides a link to. However, in this episode, Amara said, he told you what you wanted to hear. Why would death gain, what would death gain by lying? Which, yeah, right? Also, apparently now God and the Darkness are twins, which is when it was obvious in season 11 that she came first and was by herself for a little bit before Chuck made himself. Them splitting apart and making the Big Bang also contradicts season 11 because in order for God to make the multiverse, he had to lock her away since she kept destroying worlds he's trying to make. Still waiting on for why Dean and Amara have that weird connection. It was the Mark, wasn't it? I thought that was it. Like, they had that connection through the Mark. I remember thinking that in the when season 11 happened, I thought that Dean would have to die to, you know, uh, kill Amara. I would keep reading this one, but you keep on pointing out the flaws, but I understand, but I gotta get through all the other ones, but... Oh yeah, the Bernie Mac thing. This is some bull! Because I'm tired of the retconning and the lying BS. Just glad the show is coming to an end. I found this episode pretty bland. The Castiel and Jack plotline really felt like hopscotch, uh, a hot potch of Seven and Saw without actual good twist or clever writing. The Sam Dean finding Amara plotline was kind of boring and predictable. I actually should have mentioned that too. Yeah, I was getting a bit of Seven vibes, especially with... Just don't get this girl, like... What was her explanation for doing all this sadistic shit? Where did she know how to do it? Like, where? I died laughing when you pointed out that Cass uh, has seen Jack die twice because I completely forgot about that, too. I haven't because that was my... F that was the thing that I loved the most. I'll never forget Sam chopping the tree and breaking the axe. It's the funniest garbage that they ever did in season 14. Completely unintentional, by the way. Only saw now that the final episode of the series is written by Eric Kripke and Andrew Dabb. So at least I hope we get a good finale for Kripke's writing for the final plot. And I'm praying for Dabb. I did not know that, so that's actually kind of cool to know. That does have some maybe relevance but again Kripke could have just like written this on a napkin and it would still be better than anything Dab's put down. I feel like Castiel and Jack 
could have uh, had one more scene sitting i could have had one scene sitting in the bunker the sam and dean slash Mara story should have been bigger than it was it seemed like it was over way too quickly in my opinion and i agree with that too this should have been a much more prevalent thing considering jack's supposed importance to this whole story as well as how they are retconning 11 they should at least put some fucking effort into it considering it was my favorite season of the show aside from the original five this season does not feel like a final season to me in your last video there was a comment all about the hanging plot threads which yeah i pointed that out and how little they have they and how little time they have to wrap them up god and amara what which really haven't been in this season much all at all considering that they were supposed to be the big bads. Lucifer being alive in the empty, did they just forget that? Heaven losing power. I used to love this show. Now I just watch it because I've gotten this far. Where the hell is the other world Bobby and Charlie? Where the hell is our version of Bobby in heaven? Not to mention Garth and the other side characters that no longer exist. The show lost me with how sloppy they entered the whole other world Michael storyline after building it up so much. Now God and Amara are barely in the season where they should be in the most. No filler, no more side plots, no more Monster of the Week. Focus on your story, wrap it up. This is a terrible final season, I would argue worse than Game of Thrones. Not to mention the complete character assassination of God, which still makes no sense and undermines my favorite season, the God and Amara arc. It's like, I, I, I'm... I'm honestly, I'm probably gonna change my rating for this episode when uh, I do my review for the other one tomorrow night um but god you guys are the word you're looking for is weak nearly every episode in the season is completely pointless there is no real storyline half the plot is missing they are riding the gravy train they are stalling they have an ending and that is it they figured out an ending but can't manage to create any build up I have a sincere issue with this episode and, and how it handled Amara. The whole point of her and Chuck's arc in season 11 is that they learn to deal with their relationship and forgive each other. But then here, they're just like, screw it. Amara is wrong for trying to have finally have a relationship with her brother and should portray him. Why did we work so hard in season 11 only f uh, if you're only going to say she's wrong now for trying to keep their relationship solid? These retcons, people. And honestly, you could talk to a lot of really diehard Supernatural fans and they would just be like, they would have some something around it. And I don't, I don't know how at this point. Like, I'm actually... It's going to go out like a wet fart. That's what I feel that this season's going to go out on now. It's... Oh, wait, this is a funny one. So the cop driver at the end was the demon from earlier. Did he make a deal with her or did he just literally take up a career in driving because he's just that bored as hell? Just, uh, just solve now, I guess. Yeah, admittedly that cop at the very beginning, like when, the, when they come into the investigation, that was some weak acting. He was, he was dead, he was so deadpan. Why is this episode so boring? Well, because the Seven Deadly Sin story has been done to death in other movies and TV shows, NCIS, Saw, Seven, Full Metal Alchemist, several of the animes. There's even a, an anime named Seven Deadly Sins. Even season three opener of Supernatural did it so much better. There's nothing new to add, no new character development, just your generic story that could go into any type of show. This just felt like a crossover between Touched by an Angel and Seven in a twisted world of Saw featuring two side characters from Supernatural. <laughs> Recon and retread. That's all I'm going to say about the Mara and Jack storylines. Holy crap, there is so many. Ooh, someone talking about my mug. Love the Doom Eternal mug, dude. Every week I look forward to a new episode of Supernatural, but some of this season and the last have been trashed. This episode bored me. I kept checking my, the timer to see how much time was left. I did the exact same thing, and I'm intrigued to see what happens with Jack. And I do like Amara, always happy to see her return. They also need to fix heaven, or has that just been forgotten? Thought this episode was decent, but can someone please tell me why we're still getting filler episodes in the last six episodes of the show, and why Amara easily turned that on her brother was total bullshit. They rushed that so hard. I also can't accept the fact that these omnipotent beings don't know that what mere humans are planning to do on doing to that to stop them remember in season five when lucifer instantly knew sam had the horseman rings or in season 11 when amara touched dean and saw all the conversation he had with god where the hell is all that yeah you're preaching to the choir people you're you're 
Oh my god, I, I can't, I don't understand what is going on. Something that was actually kind of interesting, the director of this episode was the actor Matt Cohen, who played a young John Winchester uh, from earlier in the show. Red was a prominent color for Jack and Castiel's story. Obviously, ex obvious example was that the characters had red shoes, scarf, hair were done, for except for the last one. I couldn't help but think of the Doom characters in the original Star Trek episodes. <laughs> Wow, all these episodes should be rated way lower than they are because the writers had the time than the last episodes to make this and stretch those episodes over a year, but still include filler. What the fuck? At least try to create a cohesive story and stay on topic. I don't even think the actors are taking their role seriously anymore, and they hardly react to anything that's taking place. We're supposed to see a regular human treating, uh, threatening this all-powerful being and feel impressed? Why? We're supposed to see these people joke around and not look tense for a second about the universe-ending dilemma and consider them heroes when they're joking around instead of staying on track. And why isn't a bigger, broader story tying up loose ends and finishing character arcs? Is that so much to ask? Do people have eyes? Do they read these things? And like I said, guys, if you want an, you want an answer, you want a full-on dead pan, completely bullshit free honest answer it's the fan base it's the majority fan base i don't know what's happened because it wasn't quarantine because they were like this before but if you go and look at the ratings i'm gonna do it right now if you look at the ratings for supernatural season 15 you look at the individual episodes you give yourself a goddamn stroke i'm gonna take a guess i'm gonna take a guess most of them in the eights first one's in the eight third fourth one's in the eight fourth one's no eh, not too bad Fifth one's in the eighth. Four, sixth one's in the eighth. The seventh one, the worst episode of this entire season, is an 8.5. What, what's the latest one? What's the latest one? Oh, it's oh, it's 7.8. Oh, but last holiday is an 8.7. Let's go fuck yourself. But then look at the numbers too, right? The numbers are barely over a thousand. For an example, let's go all the way to season one and see how many reviews there are. Yeah, 7,000 reviews for the first episode of the show. Season 5, the actual ending of the show, 9.7, 8,000 reviews. It's a minute amount of psycho people are reviewing these episodes on IMDb. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's going to come out literally just before I review supernatural again oh no wait, it'll be it's uh, hopefully today's wednesday sorry my schedule is a little over the place anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video please leave a like if you're interested in more subscribe and like i said check out my buddy citizens let's get him up to 300 and let's watching his charity stream and giving to a cause to help pete fight that piece of shit anyways see you guys next time thanks for watching the video my name is nitz and you might remember me from the animated cult classic tv show undergrads it's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.